In previous lessons, you learned how to use three different types of global defines, dedefines, kdefines, and jdefines to fix untranslates or mistranslates globally in a job, and store the steno and text entry in a dictionary. In this lesson, we'll learn how to create a global change without defining steno via another type of global define, the edefine. The e in edefine stands for edit. This global type is used to edit the text only. It does not pay attention to underlying steno. Let's take a look at a perfect example of an occasion where you might prefer to use an edefine versus a D, K, or Jdefine. You can see that the name Marianne was written several times in this job, and translated with the spelling M-A-R-Y-A-N-N-E. However, here on line 18, it's clear that the correct spelling should be M-A-R-I-A-N. Before we make the correction, let's take a quick look at the underlying steno for each occurrence of this name. In this first occurrence on line 7, you can see one way of writing Marion. The steno for Marion on line 9 was written a little bit differently. And again, another different steno stroke for Marion on line 17. If you were to use a dedefine, kdefine, or jdefine, you would have to find each occurrence separately, one at a time, because each occurrence has a different underlying steno. However, if you use an edefine and define the text only, you can correct all occurrences regardless of the steno at the same time. As with any other define, you position the cursor on the item to be defined, mark it if it's more than one word, and then rather than press Ctrl D or Ctrl K or Ctrl J, you'll simply press Ctrl E to open the edefine dialog box. Now, type the correct spelling, and then press Enter. As you can see, all occurrences of Marion are now spelled correctly. It's important to understand that this has been fixed in edit only. No new dictionary entries have been created with this M-A-R-I-A-N spelling. If you translate these steno strokes in any future jobs, they'll translate with the previous spelling. Let's try that again. As you can see, the various occurrences of Patterson are also misspelled. According to the testimony on line 18, this name should be spelled differently than it has been translated. I'll do one thing differently this time. My cursor is positioned on the occurrence of Patterson on line 18. Rather than move the cursor back to the first occurrence, I'll go ahead and global it from here. It's just one word, so no need to mark. I'll just go ahead and press Ctrl E and type the correct spelling, P-A-T-E-R-S-E-N. But before I press Enter, I'm going to select the entire file option. Selecting this option means the global will apply throughout the entire file, both forward and backward, instead of just forward from the current cursor position. By the way, the entire file option is available in any type of global define, not just edefines. So whenever you're globaling, if you think the cursor might not be on the very first occurrence of the steno or text you're defining, you can select entire file to make sure the global applies throughout the entire file. Now I'll click OK or press Enter and... The spelling of Patterson has now been fixed, not only in line 18 and forward down in line 21, but also backward, in all occurrences earlier in the file. Okay, let's take a look at one more example of when you might want to use an edefine instead of a stenodefine. Suppose we discover that the name Mark is supposed to be spelled with a C, M-A-R-C, instead of M-A-R-K. I could use an edefine to correct all occurrences of the name Mark with a K to Mark with a C, but I'd run into a problem. On line 14, there's an occurrence of the word mark. If I were to just edefine the letters M-A-R-K as M-A-R-C, it could change the word mark into the name spelled M-A-R-C. To prevent that from happening, when I edefine the name mark, I won't just type M-A-R-C and press enter. Before I complete the define, I'll click the case sensitive option. This tells Catalyst to only apply the new text to occurrences where the case is identical to the case of the word or words being edefined. In other words, this edefine will now only apply to occurrences of mark where the M is initial capped. It won't apply to occurrences where the letters M, A, R, K are all lowercase or any that are all uppercase. So now when I click OK or press Enter, you can see that all occurrences of the name mark, but only the name mark and not the word mark, have been fixed. You now know how and when to use an edefine instead of a D, K, or jdefine. To practice making edefines, go into the training user and follow the directions for exercise 10 in the edit practice document. When you're ready, proceed to the next lesson in order.